withdrawal may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Stomach and sleep issues, dizziness, increased appetite, and fatigue are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. I didn't have to change my treatment. I just gave it a lift. Ask about Raylar and learn how AbbVie can help you save. Accidents never happen at a good time. We know if you've been injured, you're scared, confused, and have questions. It costs you nothing out of pocket to hire us, and we only get paid if we win your case. We're here for you and your family. The call is always confidential and always free. Not all personal injury law firms are the same. Experience counts. Results matter. If your case is important to you, call us now for a free consultation. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. A staggering number of Americans are living in the path of danger. A new study on how many of us are surrounded by wildfire risks. Good morning, I'm Annie Rose Ramos at the Silmar Christian Fellowship Church where three fires were set, three fires crosses were set on fire right in front of their building. Coming up, we speak to investigators what they believe happened here. I'm Eric Spoolman. How does somebody smuggle cocaine into what is supposed to be one of the most secure buildings on the planet? How White House Secret Service investigators are trying to answer that question coming up. Good morning. I'm Jessica Holmes. A $5 tip on a $20 pizza delivery wasn't enough for one DoorDash <laughs> driver. What he did that got him fired over the incident. Good morning. I'm Sam Rubin. New here at 10 o'clock. It may be our most curvaceous hour ever. A trio of big name stars and uh, big reveals. Plus, Dino Ortiz wants you to see her new burlesque show in Vegas. She joins us live and she has some tickets with her as well. But we begin with breaking news out of Silmar. The LAPD has launched a hate crime investigation after burned crosses were found outside of a predominantly black church. KTLA's Annie Rose Ramos, live at the scene with the very latest for us. Annie Rose, good morning. Frank, I just spoke to the lead arson investigator with the LAPD who arrived here on the scene. He tells me that the K-9 unit from LAFD is on their way here to the scene. They're hoping that the K-9 can smell around the crosses that you see here behind me in order to figure out what liquid that there was that started this fire. But he did confirm in the past couple of minutes that these were three separate fires, one for each of the three crosses. I asked him if he thought that this was intentionally set. He said in one word he describes this fire as purposeful. That is how far they are in this investigation as of this right now, this morning. In the meantime, people from the community, people from this church have been pulling over, stopping by to see what is going on here, including this one man named Gary. He says he used to belong to this church and go here a couple of years ago and was completely shocked to find out what happened here. Take a listen. It's sick. It really is because, you know, people just don't you know, you know, hatred is just so bad in this country. I mean, you're looking at what's happening in politics in this country, and it's frightening. It's scary. This is what we know so far from the LAFD. A call came in at around 4.30 in the morning from someone driving into work who drove past this church and saw that two of the three crosses were engulfed in flames. They then called 911, and by the time firefighters arrived on the scene, they say the fires were already extinguished. They don't know if someone put them out or if they went out on their own. But now this is an investigation being handled by the House of Worship task force, which is made up of the ATF, FBI, LAFD, and LAPD. The LAPD telling KTLA they are investigating this as an arson hate crime. And as members of the church wake up this morning, they are calling the pastor concerned to see if everything is okay. This church is what the pastor describes as a diverse congregation of about 200 worshipers. And when asked if he was worried or felt that this was an attack on his church and their congregation, this is what he said. Take a listen. It's a shame that people still want to do things like this in this day and age, that we come to a point where we haven't got past, I'm mad at something, or it's the point where I have nothing else to do. It's kind of shameful. We're going to put those three crosses back up. They might be cut, cut a little shorter, place the rocks. So, if, yeah, we're, we're moving forward. Nothing stops us. 
We know that K-9 unit on its way here to the scene in order to smell this area. In the meantime, the task force going around to this area, canvassing it to see if there's any ring camera video, a surveillance video, to bring them closer to figuring out exactly what happened here. Reporting live from Silmar, I'll send it back to you both. Dramatic images captured this morning of a car that caught fire in downtown LA happened about 11.30 last night <clears throat> on 15th Street near Central Avenue. LA City firefighters found the car engulfed in flames when they arrived. No one was inside. The car was parked. Firefighters put the fire out in a few minutes, but it is unclear how the fire started. Four robbery suspects are in police custody following a high-speed pursuit in San Bernardino County. CHP officers spotted a white Tesla on the 210 freeway yesterday that was wanted in connection with multiple robberies in the city of Riverside. Suspects refused to pull over and a chase ensued. The pursuit ended near Rancho Cucamonga when the suspects crashed into another vehicle and all four of our